Hey guys, if you're ever thinking about building anything to fit in an optical bay, you really should just know the industry standard sizes, and you can look them up online. There's PDFs on it and stuff. They're a little abstruse because they include a lot of old form factors and optional variations on holes and stuff. But basically, the body of an optical device is 146. That's 146 millimeters. Okay? Everything will be metric on opticals. Okay. And when you turn it to its side and you measure it this way, you should get about 41. And if I really squeeze it tight, I'm getting 41. Touch over. Right there, if I'm going right in between the sides, I get 41.5. So those are basically your controls. But see, there's also spacing on this top flange, which you need to know about. Okay. And the spacing on the top flange is about a about, it seems to me about a quarter of a millimeter. But let me see if I can get it just right. Sometimes you really gotta measure things in several places to make sure that you're getting a good reading. Okay. I'm getting 0.8 on this lip, and I'm guessing on the bottom it's probably like 0.2. So you're talking about a millimeter bigger. So your bay, yeah, it's about 0.01 or something. It's almost flush on the bottom. It also overhangs on the side. This bezel is so something more like 148, if I remember correctly. Yeah, this is this bezel is going to be 148, and the body is going to be 146. So you basically have a millimeter of overhang on the sides, and you can get away with a millimeter of overhang on the top on your face plate, some things, guys. And the holes, I guess we might as well. Now I measure from the body of it. The, the now you could go straight to the face, I guess. I guess let's go straight to the face, because that looks to me like 53. Could be wrong. Make sure my eyes. I, I would call it 53. And I'd call that 132. So if you know these things, you're going to be able to make your holes in the right place. You need to know all these different measurements, and then you can just transfer them, basically. So you're at 10, and I'd say 21. No, maybe 22. There's a lot of ways you can come up with this information, but if you measure something, I guess I'm getting 21 and a half. And I'm getting 10. 10. 21 and a half are working out for me. Probably close enough, huh? So, you guys now have that information. You can put it in your little notes there or whatever. If you're a modder, you want to build stuff. Now you know. And the overall on these things varies a lot. So there's no distinct overall line. It's like seven something, six and three quarters. They, they vary. Depends. Okay? So the, the length of it is not so important. But the, the other parts are, are real critical because they determine spacing. So if you know that the bottom of this is just about flush, when I put this in here and it's trapped, so that gives me my whole layout basically. And then I'll be able to build a reservoir below that. It comes down, sticks out three eighths past that. Holes in the sides for everything. Everything will work fine. It'll just slip in place, and it can use the Antec hardware to secure it. Doesn't need any screws or anything. But I'll go ahead and uh, drill and tap everything for screws anyway. Pretty simple project. That's actually very very difficult to accomplish at a high level. Uh, acrylic work is challenging. It doesn't matter how many years you've done it. You, you know, the closer you get to the end of the project, the more likely it is you'll do something to destroy the whole project. So, 
just uh, take it step by step and uh, get a good plan together and move forward. Okay, uh, pretty much making this part of the video for my client if he has time to watch it. And this is where a if a reservoir was 10 inches in length in the sense that it's inserted into the case 10 inches, that's where the back of the reservoir would be. If it was me, I would probably go nine and a half just so that it doesn't slap up against anything and uh, just make a little room. But uh, yeah, we could go up to 10 inches on the length of the reservoir. And, uh, just taking a look at the uh, opening there. 10 inches being about right there. As you can see, in line with the face of the DVD drive. And just to demonstrate, you know, how things fit, you know, you can see there's a little gap right there. There's also where the springy action is on that bay. And uh, I bet you can see that it's flush with the factory plates, okay, which lines it up with the last two holes there, which works fine with this. That's why you have uh, two holes here and here, so that you can um, insert this so that it would register right there. I don't want to do that right now. This isn't the time to do it. You need to be able to tilt it in. But see the little cammed foot gets pressed out by this, and the two little pins register real nice right in there. And that could happen the same for the reservoir. So the holes that I need to put on the sides need to be the holes that are there. So basically, I just use the optical device to line everything up, and I'm good to go. So to make the faceplate of my reservoir really fill this up nice. Make sure it really doesn't leave much of a gap. I'm going to go with 85 in height. And we'll go with 148, which is the... Uh, let me get back here so you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to stretch this out one-handed. It's more fun than it looks like. Come on, a little bit more. Mm. And I'm getting an inside on the face plate. Ah, gotta make sure I'm really getting that inside of 148.71. And I think 148 would be good. So basically, got all my numbers. I already know that the body has to be 146. I know that the face plate's going to be 48. And according to this, I got 85 being a nice measurement. This is one millimeter, and the body is 41.5, so you get 85, which is perfect. Um, let me spin them around so you can see. But this basically reads, if I could do it one-handed accurately, it's about 42.5, and this is 41.5. Okay, so you know, if you measure it at a hard point, it's not squished. It's 41.5. So that works out perfectly. And I've also got my hole locations. These are 52 and a half from the face. These are 132 and a half from the face. And then I know from the bottom I've got 10 and I've got 21.5. And you same here, 10, 21.5. And then all I have to do is add 41, uh, 42.5 to the measurement. So, and then come up another 10, another 21 and 5. And then I've got my whole layout all the way up. So that's the math on that if you guys ever wanted to know about that or think about that for reservoir building or anything else where you want to put in an optical device into the bay or something. you got to build something. So... At this point, I could probably uh, bag this case back up for a little bit because everything is just going to be done with math now. I'm just going to cut my parts and uh, get everything right. Okay, just a little full-scale drawing before I go up to the computer and make a simple construction diagram. Um, 
As you can see, it's really long. This is a DVD next to it. Okay, the face is going to stick out. Three eighths. Get a chamfer. Recessed fill port as close as possible to the front, so you only have to pull the reservoir out a tiny bit to be able to fill it. Tap top it off. Flow divider over each port, basically like a little L, because the ports are in the far corners. Little L. Better shot of that here. You can see each one of them just basically gets a little L. And uh, that's just so that they don't uh, starve and there's no cavitation. And again, here's the fill port. This little perimeter here, that's the overhang of the face, one millimeter at the top and sides, flush on the bottom. And that's actual size. This is how I'll be. I've drawn this with. 3 8 sides because sometimes I, I, I like to do that and just drill two thirds of the way in, tap it. But I also have these little guys here. These are the capping holes on the inside so I can through drill a quarter inch, through tap it, clean out the threads real nice, then I can glue these over on the inside. So you'll have all these little, along the front anyway, a bunch of little bubbles. They aren't terribly unattractive. Once they're wet, you barely see them. So basically, that's it. You've got an, 80, an 85 by 148 face. You've got an 84 by 146 body, front, the mouth of it, the face of it. It's going to be 250 millimeters from the back. The body is 250, not including the face, but including the back piece. So that's about like nine and three quarters or something. And that's what I've come up with. Now I didn't do my whole layout yet. It's easier for me to do that up, up on the computer. I can do, do it more precisely than sitting here. But I did want to get some sketches together just to kind of show you guys, you know, what you got to think about.